I like it, but I'm a PC. And today, I'm making this story for you guys. In this story, I'm going to be talking about Swing Components in Java. And actually, this is our series where we're going to be talking about Swing Components. I went a little into Swing in my basic Java series, but I wanted to go a little more into it now, now and make a series about it because there's a lot of stuff in Swing and it's very useful because you can throw something together very quickly. You don't have to learn about, you don't have to worry about a lot of specific stuff like what each individual pixel or anything like that. You just throw something together really quickly, really quickly, and you make a nice application out of it. And you make some basic games out of it as well. So it's a very useful feature in Java, and so I want to talk about. It. In future tutorials, I'm going to talk about more stuff, but in this tutorial, I want to talk about some of the basic components in it, some of the ones you'll be using most often, and also how to think of it in terms of containers and adding components to containers and that sort of thing. So without any further ado, let's get started on the tutorial. All right, then here's our first tutorial about Swing. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the class. And I'm going to call it Basic Swing. I'm assuming you already have a basic knowledge of Java. If you don't, then you should watch my uh, basic Java series, which covers everything, from or most of the basics of it. And I'm going to be, some of this should be review for you in this tutorial, but after that we're going to get into some uh, better stuff, I guess. Alright, so here I have the class set up. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a Java file. So I'm going to call it Basic swing.java and there we go yes I know okay and uh, let me finish the new method here string args alright now let's get started so I mentioned briefly in the intro that I want you to think about it in terms of uh, containers and how to add things to containers so we make a window that's a container and then you're gonna have more containers inside there to organize things so the our first container we're going to make is a JFrame. So we're going to make this class extend JFrame. Extend JFrame. So this, for all, intents, for all intents and purposes, is considered a JFrame class, and then we're just adding on to it. So I'm going to go ahead and import that Java x.swing.jframe. This one's fairly general. It's everything inside the window, but there's a more general one, which is the window. So you have the window, which we're not going to worry about because that's too specific for us. And then we have the JFrame, which is everything inside the window. So that's what we're worrying about. Okay, um, it's good to reference everything from a non-static perspective. So we're going to make a new object of this class, a new basic swing. You may be more comfortable with me giving it a name and saying something a basic swing something equals. But this will just this just creates it without setting up a name. So we won't be able to reference it later, but we don't need to. Okay, this will reference the constructor. So public basic swing. And there we go. Whenever you make a swing application, you're going to need to set up a few things. Um, I I usually go by like five things or so, but the book I went by went, 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 said that the book I used said there's three things mainly to set up. But so we'll just have to see. So so super, we're calling the constructor method of JFrame. And that was the title, so we're going to say basic swing app. Okay. Now we're going to set the size of the window. So set size. And I'm going to say, what shall we say? 400 by 300. 400 wide, 300 high. Next. What should we do next? Let's say set resizable uh, true. So we can't resize it. Doesn't really matter though. Sometimes you set location relative to, but it really it doesn't affect it that much. I guess that's everything. So the last thing you want to do is set visible. And you want to do this at the very last. So set visible is the last, super is the first, because if you want to call the constructor of the parent, then you got to do that immediately. So this one's first, and this one's last, and the rest of the stuff doesn't really matter. Now let's go ahead and start adding components. So we're just going to go one by one and add each one. First thing. We're going to need to import JPanel. All right, and this is just another um, container. We're, later on, we're going to be throwing all our components into into that, and that's just another organization factor. So let's go ahead and set it up. So JPanel, the type P is what I'm going to call it, equals new JPanel, and there's nothing in the constructor. 
Alright, now I have set now I have that set up. Now let's go and add some of our component thing we're looking forward to. First thing, I'm gonna add a button. So job import java x dot swing dot j button j button b is equal to new j button. With the constructor of the j button. Let's say I don't remember what it is. It's fairly easy to, to look things up, and it's it's a good pro, uh, skill as a program to be able to look up the constructors and different methods from built-in classes. So what we're going to do is we're going to look it, look it up in the Java API, which is where they have explanations for all of the Java methods and classes and packages and all that. So you could go to oracle.com, find it there, but we're just going to Google it, and that's always the first result anyway. So I'm going to type in Java J button, and right here, like I said, these are both Java API links. Only they're to different versions of Java. Uh, j version six is one of the newer ones, and platform version two is one of the older ones. The reason why this one's still the first one to show up is because they didn't really make any ma major differences in the class. So I'll just grab this one. Let's see, constructors. Here we go. Here are all the constructors. There's several different ways I can construct it using action, icon, and string, and all that. So I think I'm just going to give it a string. The program we're making is going to be like the ultimate hello world program. We're going to have everything say hi in some way. So we're going to have our button say hello. So now we're, we need to add that. So first we're going to add it to our panel. So p.add p uh, b. This will add our button to the panel. Basically any container in Swing will have this add method, including JFrame. So we'll, we'll, we'll be able to add p to the JFrame now. So we'll ha first add a list, list of things to p, and then we'll go ahead and add p. That's how we're going to go about doing this. Now that we've got that figured out, let's let's go ahead and compile it and see if what we have so far works. So Java C basic swing dot Java Java basic swing. Okay, compiled. Okay, and let's see if it runs. There you go. It runs. We have a button there, and that was very easy. Think of all that goes into making this window. This, there's all kinds of pixels here that need to be drawn, and and here the button, it changes when my mouse goes over, and I click it, and, and that uh, makes it animate, I guess, animate differently when I have it held in, and all that's a lot of things that go into it. But we only did a short code to add it, and we can add other things pretty easily. Next thing I add is a J text field. So I gotta import that real quick. Java x dot swing dot j text field. This is a bar where you can input things, and it's a text field, so it only has one line. So I'm gonna say j text field. I'm gonna call it t equal to new j text field. How should I have this one greet me? I'm gonna have it just say uh, hi. All right. Next, moving on. Let's make a j text area. J text area. I'm gonna call this one ta equals new j text area. Now, the difference between j text area and j text field is that area can go over multiple lines. Field. Yeah, there we go. So in order to show that I can go over multiple lines, I can have it say how slash n r slash n u, where the slash n will move to the next line. So that way this will take advantage of the multiple lines that are available in j text area. And of course, I gotta import that. Import Java x dot swing dot j text area. All right, I say it's high time we test it again. I think it's still running. That was weird. Okay, uh, test it out. Java c basic swing dot Java. Okay, Java basic swing. Run it. And doesn't show the text area, which makes sense because I didn't add them. I forgot. I shouldn't have closed that. Oh well. I'll open up later. So now we're going to go and add this, this, these two new components to our panel. So p.add t and p.add ta. Got to open up my command prompt again. Now that I've actually added those components to our room, let's try and recompiling and see if it goes works better this time. There we have it. Hello, hi, how are you? So, I didn't call anything in the constructor f for the text field or t text area, which, um, well actually no, I, I, I only set the string, which is one possible thing, but as you could see, it looked very cramped. 
So I want to find a way to, to give it a size. So I'm going to look up the constructors for those components. So JTEX area, which shows up right here. And what's it tell me? Here's the list of constructors. So here's the one I think I'm going to use. Uh, this text and rows and columns. So let's see how many rows should I give it. I'll give it 20 rows, 5 columns. Sounds about right. And text field, let's look that one up as well. Look at this one. Here we go. In columns, or I could say text and columns. I think I'll use this one. So I'll see how many columns I want. So that's 20. It's very important that you know how to look these things up because even your professors probably don't have these memorized. If they do have them memorized, it's because they've gone over it a million times. And if it seems like they have memorized it when they don't, it's probably because they actually looked it up themselves before the before they taught you about this stuff. So learn to look this, these things up. I, I have to look this up all the time in order to figure out what each individual thing, or the constructors in particular, the, what the constructors are. So now that I got that fixed up, let's try... There we go. Looks better now. Probably did too many. Uh, you know what? It's rows, columns. I want that to be switched. There we go. A oh, 520. Next thing we're going to add is a J label. This is a fairly simple thing. It's just text from this. Uh, it's a label. It's text that you cannot edit. Text field and text area are both input areas that, that you can edit the text. J labels where you can't edit text, so you often want to put a J label, maybe from text area or something like that, to say what you want to be inputted in there. On a J label, you put input age, you make a text field to have them input the age, something along those lines. So J label, I'm going to call, I'm going to call it L new J label, and I'm just going to say string. I've, there are probably other constructors, but that's the only one I'm going to put it in. So what should I have it, the greeting be for this one? What's up, I guess. So we got a whole list of greetings here, and it's looking pretty good. Let's test it. Always good to test it. And I made the same mistake I made just now. I did not add the label p dot add. No. Easy mistake to make. Also goes to show the importance of testing it. There we go. Now it's working better. Hmm. Whenever I close my my uh, window, it doesn't seem to close it in the command bar. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but if it's happening to you, you press Control C to force close it. I don't know why it's doing. It's kind of weird, odd, weird and glitch. Now we're into our last swing component, J Combo Box. This one's a little more complicated, but you see it a lot, so I figured I'd go ahead and lay it out. So I got import it, job x swing dot j combo box. And I legitimately forgot the constructor for this one, so let's look it up. J combo box. Right here. And here's the constructors. An object array of the items in the J combo box. There we go. And by the way, if you if you let's say have no idea what that is. Just click J comma box and they give you more detailed explanation. Very cool stuff. So um, let me just get this done. CB equals new J combo box. So it's an object array. Generally, you're going to make it out of strings. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So by the way, J comma box is like a drop down box. So it'll it'll give you a list of things to select from. So I'm going to make an array. Call it choices. And set up like this. If you don't know about arrays, watch my basic series. I'm just setting it up in the easiest way to set it up, which I'm just gonna throw in a couple strings in there. So let's see. Um, I'm kind of running out of English greetings. Let's let's throw in a couple foreign ones. So uh, I used to live in the Netherlands, so I'll put in a Dutch one. Hello, that's how you say hi in Dutch. And then let's see, French, bonjour, and one more. I'll try in Japanese. Konnichiwa. That's probably spelled wrong. I have no idea how to actually spell it. Or if there is even English spelling. So, here you have it. Then I'll just put the choices as the parameter for that constructor. 
Now that I got that taken care of, I'll go ahead and p dot add cb, and then we've got that part finished, I believe. So now let's run it again, and here we have it. We have all of our basic swing components. So I have the the button. We have a text field where, by the way, you can edit and type other stuff in there. Same thing with the text area. On the text area, it's over multiple lines. And then what's up is a label, you can't edit it, just saying it there. And then here I can select different things in the combo box. That's all for this tutorial. So uh, for, the, for as far as the rest of the series goes, I decided to do it a little differently than I usually do my series. I could go through and talk about one swing component at a time, one swing concept at a time, but I figured that would be kind of boring because in order to make a cool swing application, you can kind of use them together. So I decided to make several different applications using more or less all, all of the swing components, or, or a lot of them at least, a lot of the major ones. And for that reason, it doesn't matter what order you go in. Up on the screen I'll show you all of the ones that I have in the series, and you can go whichever order you want. I'll, I'll line them up in the order that I suggest you go in, because some are easier than others. Some of the concepts are more complex than others, but they don't uh, really build on each other one by one. So you can, you can click on the screen for the individual tutorials, or links will of course be in the description as well. And if, if you enjoy the tutorial, you know, please rate, comment, subscribe, I always appreciate it. Leave a comment telling me what you, you thought, and liking it all, helps my videos out a lot. I really appreciate it. So that's all. I'll talk to you guys next time.